SCP-3140 Botanical Warfare Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3140-1 is stored in an enclosed containment hangar at Armed Containment Area 40 in an inactive state with access to an underground testing area. Any testing must be approved by Level 4 3140 personnel. During testing, the 3140-S subject must be watched by researchers and security outside of the testing area. Upon conclusion of testing, the anomaly must be deactivated and brought to its chamber. Investigations into the uses of SCP-3140 and Davik Society and whether other instances of the anomaly exist are ongoing. Revision 1 Level 4 3140 approval is required for the planting of seeds recovered from SCP-3140 instances. The guidelines in Document 3140, HRT-1, must be followed for the initial planting. Revision 2 SCP-3140-2 and SCP-3140-3 will be stored in enlarged containment hangars at Botanical Garden Beta. Level 4 3140 approval is required for testing with either or both anomalies. Description SCP-3140-1 is the only extant member of SCP-3140, a group of arboreal entities. SCP-3140-1's body primarily consists of Suppressus gigantea, footnote 1, the Tibetan cypress, and Prunus serrata, footnote 2, the Japanese cherry, bark and wood standing at a height of 12 meters. The torso of its body is roughly spherical, with multiple flowering cherry branches and small cherry trees growing from it. Footnote 3. The blossoms do not require any sunlight and nutrients in order to grow. The anterior side has a stylized eye etched into it, which is surrounded by illustrations of Davic weaponry, cultural symbols, and skulls with seven eye sockets. The posterior portion has a circular thomic glyph pattern. Footnote 4. Patterns composed of many interconnected thaumaturgic symbols. Davic TGPs often had hundreds of symbols within small spaces and were commonly created by skilled thaumaturgic artisans. With a radius of 26 centimeters, which prevents fire and erosion damage. Three anterior facing wooden barrels, one meter long and 28 centimeters wide with a single hole on the front or on the torso. One is attached above the right leg, one extends from a dorsal branch on the right side, and one is positioned one meter left of the eye symbol. Two wooden digitigrade legs are connected to the sides of the anomaly. These legs possess full articulation due to the wood at the joints being intermixed with an unknown green and pink substance. Designated 3140, C. The legs are ornately carved with iconography of Davite soldiers killing and eating people, soldiers with unidentified megafauna and entities resembling SCP-3140 besieging castles and cities, and slaves being given to Deva matriarchs. Footnote 5. The Leading Theocratic Aristocracy and Davic Society. The bottom of the left leg features a hand-shaped recess with a depth of 11 centimeters, with the phrase, For the Conqueror, written in Davic found in the center. The feet have three long toes, two anterior, and one posterior. In an inactive state, SCP-3140-1 sits in a crouching position. Any subject, hereafter designated 3140-S, that places their left hand in the hand-shaped recess and says the Davic word for awaken will activate SCP-3140-1, making it stand upright. The anomaly will begin to follow 3140-S 
and will follow directions said in Davik. Directions that SCP-3140-1 is incapable of achieving will not be followed. Saying the Davik word for sleep will bring the anomaly back to its inactive state. Any 3140-S may reactivate SCP-3140-1 at any time by saying, Awaken, within the anomaly's vicinity in any language. The following are a sample of known directions SCP-3140-1 will follow, all spoken in Davik, and the outcomes. Moo. SCP-3140-1 moves to a location 3140-S points to. Stomp. SCP-3140-1 moves to and stomps at a location 3140-S points to. Stab. Various bone spikes, approximately 25 centimeters long, emerge from every surface of the anomaly. Footnote 6. Multiple spikes have broken and disintegrated during testing. These retract after one minute. Slide. A mix of translucent, low-viscosity substances cover SCP-3140-1, falling off of it after three minutes. Bring help. SCP-3140-1 secretes a substance similar to alarm pheromones of extant insect species for two minutes. Heal. Resin seeps from random locations on the anomaly, primarily around the barrels. Fire. Smoke emerges from the barrels on SCP-3140-1. See Document 3140, See List, for further commands. SCP-3140-1 was discovered at a Foundation archaeological dig site near Bakudu Jammu and Kashmir, Republic of India, on the 27th of January 2017. The dig site appeared to have at one point been the location of a battle between Davite forces and an unknown Orthothan group. Footnote 7. A set of mythological and religious beliefs based around the universe being the second universe to exist. This is typically paired with the worship of seven universal guardian deities known as the Korotusa, of which six have died. Based on the presence of non-anomalous weapons and armor possessing acute heptagrams, sometimes surrounded by other polygons, regular polygons, ranging from four to seven sides, and humanoid figures with four to seven arms. Said battle is believed to have occurred at some point in the early Low Davic period, circa 11,000 BCE, suspected to be the Century Conquest. Footnote 8. A war waged by the Davites on a number of civilizations in Asia, lasting from 1139 BCE to 10939 BCE. Around SCP-3140-1 legs, were chained leg cuffs made of meteoric iron, locked with a complex mechanical system, with the phrase Ruination to the Invaders written in Orthothan on both cuffs. The chains had been heavily damaged, likely from attempts to break them. The remnants of an SCP-3140 instance were found at dig sites in the vicinity, which had damaged legs and a destroyed torso. The torso's remains had a solidified mass of miscellaneous plant matter and bone fragments in it, connected by multiple small roots. Other objects in the area included bones, weaponry, and armor. All artifacts, the destroyed instance, and SCP-3140-1 were transported to Area 40 on the 29th of January 2017. Based on texts found in SCP-1726 and SCP-140, SCP-3140 were a common weapon utilized by the Davic Empire during and after the Century Conquest, though it is suggested that the anomaly had predated Davite civilization. Footnote 9. Based on the leading theory that redacted relic, the anomaly was substantially modified from its original form by Davite horticulture, 
only resembling SCP-3140 not long before the Century Conquest. The original purpose of the anomaly is unknown. Thaumaturgic horticulture methods would be used to grow different variations of the entities, primarily designed for military application. Below are several text excerpts detailing the growth and usage of SCP-3140 in Davite society. Document 1726-503 Correspondence from Katin Daraj to Waysard Anton, circa 1130 BCE, of the Erleon Tipa, describing an overview of a Davite provisional camp. Next to the prisoners' slaughtering grounds, I saw a massive farm. It stretched out from the clearing, which I estimate to be 60 herbs long, 50 herbs wide, and past the corpses possibly further. I estimate the clearing to be 61 herbs. Many growing and grown amunge are in the plots, possibly 100 or more. The area has less guards, though many experienced presence aether benders occupy it. A hill in an unguarded region gave the perfect view, and the holy ray tubes, praise the elemental holies, improved it. Davik, death to the brutes, aether benders walk the columns and would stop by the mature and crouched ones, then retrieve objects from the red robes. Aether Black would flash in their hands as they retrieved the materials and inserted them into the amunch, which rippled like water during the process. I could not easily glimpse the materials for they were clouded by the Aether Black air, but the holy ray tubes, praise the elemental holies, illuminated spirit residual outlines of bone and flesh. After the process ended, a quick change would occur to the golem. Tentacles like the Deepers, I suggest an investigation to see if a deeper pact was formed, cannons of great size and with many barrels, and spikes to rival our spears all grew instantaneously. The Aether Benders would move on to the next, and a soldier would lead slaves, likely captured warriors, by chain to the wooden beast. They were all starved and scarred and trembled with every step. If they did not begin to etch Davik, death to the brutes, victories and violence onto the golems, a small rod would be stabbed into their back and they would immediately return to work. Some of these artists had dozens stuck into them. Document 1726-991 Written by Matran Najan in his personal diary, circa 10950 BCE, describing the invasion of the Olut city-state by Davite troops. The first attackers were Davic soldiers, who emerged from the jungle at the early sunrise to assault the gateway. Luckily, our warriors were as prepared as the Tenth Y prophesied and promised, for they had a great many traps, weapons, and strong fortifications. Our archers up on the wall did little to assist them, and the onlookers up here, myself included, cheered. We knew the Davite Empire was the greatest to ever exist, so this victory was truly glorious. I was nervous, though. The countless stories of endless victories and the taming of great beasts that belong in other realms came back to me. An attack with so few soldiers seemed wrong. After a Joalon had passed with no new action, the crowd around the archers grew smaller, but our good warriors stood strong with anticipation. Another Joalon later, most had left to return to their homes in or around the inner city, and the archers began to speak about unrelated events. Unusually, the chimes of safety had not rung despite the apparent victory. That was when I heard a rumble and saw trees swaying from my window. Suddenly, three large beings of wooden leaves rose above the horizon. Their bodies were like castles of wood, and their legs were larger than any tree trunk I have seen in my huts. Each had vast numbers of Davites scrambling along stairwells, lined with bark plating on the exterior and on fortified platforms, covered by large trees. Strange pink and blue flowers blossomed all over. A few holes I could see on their fronts suggest they have an interior as well. The hundred cannons fired in unison from the top and middle of the wall, but the tree beasts kept walking. 
more and more were fired, and only small pieces of the things would shatter. The ground troops were being attacked from all sides by smaller wood creatures, some still taller than any man. I saw a man have spiked vines wrap around his body and rip him like cloth, and another was impaled by several wooden spikes. The traps and barricades were stepped on and broken, and the archers and cannon workers were killed by Davite's arrows. As they got closer on the top of the wall, I grabbed all I could and ran from my home and into the city. A jolt later, I heard the chimes of invasion ring from all around. Document 1726-724 Illustrated Modern World Travels, circa 800 BCE An incomplete book describing the author's journey to learn about all the cultures and societies in Central and East Asia. Sketches of the described locations are also present, though most of them are poor in quality, and many passages are largely incoherent. The writer is presently unknown. Clouds swirled in the sky as my boat sailed along the coast. As with all saint creations, it was efficient and simple, but I feared it would collapse at any moment. After an uro, I was able to see the edge of the Yatan clan's village. The rest was hidden in dense foliage. The Masan Codexes claimed the clan to be a relic of the Empire Davik, a fragment Davik. A much debated idea, as none could verify from risk of death or worse. This day I could see well that they were fragment Davik. Hudson's sculptures of bone were common. Occasional villagers and guards walking around. The only crop I saw was a large and thin tree, growing slices of meat on the branches. Guards would grab a slice and eat, and another would grow soon after. A likely solution for the few animals and humans that could be fed on. Small Uoshu, wood deities tamed and used for war, were fishing using tens of arms on their fronts. Once all arm claws had grabbed a fish, they would drop them into a basket that would then be put into a hole on another Uoshu. This one would then trudge into the forest, vanishing. This repeated without end. Full texts and artwork related to SCP-3140 instances can be found in Document 3140, His Docs. The use of SCP-3140 decreased over time, gradually replaced in favor of thaumaturgic mechanical weapons. However, some David clans continued to use the entities for hard labor, farming, and protection. The last remaining ones are suspected to have been destroyed by forces under Chinese general Xin Kai, circa 270 BCE. Addendum 1 On March 1, 2017, two seeds, designated SCP-3140-2 and SCP-3140-3, retreat from SCP-3140-1, were planted in an enlarged botanical garden in Area 40, Botanical Garden Beta. Following Davite horticulture instructions found in Document 1726-801 and 1726-822, compiled in Document 3140-HRT. Said instructions utilized multiple anomalous compounds and thaumaturgic rituals carried out by Thaumaturgy Division personnel. SCP-3140-2 would be grown without modifications being made, while SCP-3140-3 would be grown for use in farming. By May, several wooden spheres with small branches extending from them had grown, and by July growths resembling legs had formed. Addendum 2 On the 5th of September 2017, SCP-3140-2 and SCP-3140-3 had fully grown and had broken out of their dirt plots. Following the relocation to separate containment chambers, testing regimens began. SCP-3140-2 is largely the same as SCP-3140-1, though it lacks any inscriptions, etchings, or barrels. The anomaly is unresponsive to the Fire command. The leading explanation for the lack of barrels 
is that they were added to the entity after it had fully grown, which is unlikely to carry over to offspring. Research into adding these onto the anomaly is ongoing. SCP-3140-3 lacks the same features as SCP-3140-2 and has a largely different body structure than SCP-3140. The entity has a height of 4 meters and a 3 meter wide torso. The underside possesses a mass of tendrils made of wood and 3140C, each of which have a different structure. Personnel have successfully used SCP-3140-3 in the cultivation of soybeans, rice, turmeric, and sugarcane, with various commands using the tendrils to achieve this. However, the process is slower than existing mechanical farming methods. Further research is being performed to see if SCP-3140 instances could be utilized by the Foundation, which includes tests to see if instances could learn new commands after growth. Thank you for listening to SCP-3140 Botanical Warfare by Nat Voltaic. If you enjoyed this SCP, please like and subscribe, and follow the link in the description to the SCP Wiki, and vote up the article to support the author and the SCP Wiki as a whole.